Queensland interpreter Sarah Dearlove, who will be helping us today. Welcome, Michael and Sarah. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. So, Sarah, you will be speaking the words that Michael is signing to you if people are, are, are a bit unclear of how this is working. And we are on Facebook if you want to see that happening. Michael, have you always been deaf? I have been, yes. I was born deaf, profoundly deaf. I went to school in a deaf school and I was very young at the time, obviously. It's probably around about the age of six months or so that it was first diagnosed that I was deaf and I had to wear some very cumbersome old fashioned hearing aids at the time. Um, and by the time I was eight months old, um, they were working reasonably well with a lot of um, speech training and assistance from some wonderful teachers of the deaf that I had involved in my life as a child who met with me and my parents to teach me how to learn to listen and speak reasonably well. My first word happened when I was at the age of two and the word that I first spoke was on, which was, you know, uh, you know my parents were incredibly proud that I was able to, to use those hearing aids well enough to be able to use some speech. By the time I was in preschool, so I'm probably about the age of four by now, um, it was out in Highfields um, in Newcastle and there was probably around about eight, I think it's reasonable to say that there were eight, um, eight of us in the preschool and I was very, very happy at that age. When I, by the time I was in school, I was in a mainstream school with a hearing support class and that was from the years kindergarten through to year two, maybe even year three. No, I beg your pardon, I'm trying to remember, goodness, we're going back a long ways <laughs> now, from kindergarten to year five. Um, yes, yeah, so... By the time I was halfway through year five, I was mainstreamed or moved into a hearing class. At that time, the teachers thought that I was actually doing very well, and that was the main reason or impetus for encouraging me to engage in mainstream education, which I did until I completed my year 12 HSC. I'm starting to get um, an understanding of how you became passionate about working with other young people and why you might have gotten into teaching. So I'm keen to get into that perhaps uh, a little bit further down the track. But you talked about... Um, using uh, having hearing aids as a child and you have a cochlear implant now um, does that help at all do you have some level of hearing it does yes it does help um, I received or had the implant when I was around or was I was around 36 years old so in the year 2007 so it was later in life that I got the cochlear implant but I look I have to say that it certainly is fantastic particularly when it's compared to hearing aids which are muffled and distorted um, the cochlear implant allows for a crisper sound to come through. Um, so for me, it's absolutely been worthwhile. Prior to me getting the cochlear implant, I couldn't hear, um, you know, the hum of the fridge or the tick of the clock. Um, you know, birds singing around me. All those environmental sounds were lost to me. Um, but having the cochlear implant means that I can now hear the hum of the fridge, the tick of the clock. Um, and sometimes I'll be aware of sounds around me and I get frustrated trying to work out what on earth that is. And I'll say to a friend, someone, someone nearby me to say, what is that, that sound? And they'll let me know it was the clock. So I remember the very first time I became aware of the sound of a ticking clock. Um, so yes, it's, it's been an amazing experience. In terms of, um, you know, using or speech and listening skills, um, I use my listening skills when I'm talking one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, and prior to my cochlear implant, I haven't been able to hear sounds like the S and SH and F sounds in words, but the cochlear implant has me allowed me better access to those sounds of speech. So you, you do hear speech sounds, but I get the sense that Auslan is, is a very big part of how you communicate. Is that the case? Yes, that's true. I started learning Auslan, goodness, I was young, I was in university um, and I was doing some teacher training at the time. Um, that was at Griffith University, um, Brisbane. Um, so that's where I was based at that time. I had some wonderful supports. The university provide great supports for students who were deaf at that university. Um, um, you know, fields of law, art and education, as well as the humanities, you know, have always taken a great interest to me. Um, so, yeah, I was at the university there for quite some time. And as I say, they provided wonderful support services, um, such as interpreters and note takers for students accessing the curriculum. 
Um, and of course, once I had access to interpreters, I then became aware of just how rich the language was and, be, you know, became using it more often. Wonderful. It's 12 to 10 on ABC Newcastle. We're speaking with Michael Clarkson. Uh, he is profoundly deaf and telling us about his experiences and his work. And uh, we have Sarah Dealove here who is interpreting uh, Michael's Auslan and, and Sarah's is the voice that you're hearing here this morning. Michael, what does your job involve? Okay, so I essentially supervise and support a team of teachers of the deaf who work more directly with deaf students in the classroom. Um, I allow, assist and uh, provide role modelling um, and also work directly with deaf students on the caseload. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. Have Being profoundly deaf yourself in that position, is that significant and does it give you a, a different understanding of some of the issues for the students? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what then do you find when you're working with young people in the schools? Uh, they may be deaf or have hearing impairment. How, how are they feeling? Are they pretty positive about life and what they might achieve? Yes, for sure, which is a wonderful thing. Um, you know, most of them are so incredibly excited to see deaf teachers at the school. Um, so deaf and hard of hearing students are oftentimes the only student in their entire school who are deaf or hard of hearing. So that means that they can be incredibly isolated. So when they have an opportunity to see a deaf teacher, they do become, um, I guess, very inspired. A rapport is definitely there. It allows opportunities for them to discuss what's going on in the classroom, um, you know, whether they want to sit at the front of the classroom to better hear the teacher, things like that. It is a, a week where there's a real focus on uh, people who are deaf and, and some of the challenges they may face. Is there something, anything really in particular that, that you think is valuable for um, people who are not deaf to understand? Yes. Um, there are events happening um, at the moment. We're currently in the International Week of Deaf People and there are wonderful opportunities for the wider community to, to have a better understanding about what deaf people are able to achieve in the world. Um, you know, we can access things like deaf arts, deaf education and law. Um, to have, you know, uh, deaf trades people in our local area and across Australia and around the world, it's a wonderful opportunity for to show these events, to showcase and therefore raise awareness in the general community about what goes on in our world. I get the sense, Michael, that you've been in, in really supported through your studies, school, university and into your career. Was there ever a, a question of whether or not you could achieve what you wanted to do? That's a, that's a great question. So, so it's a great question. There certainly were times in my life where I doubted myself and what I might be able to achieve. It's about resilience. It's about always having a positive attitude and the, the idea that regardless, I can. I just have to work through and, and get through challenges as they present themselves. I was fortunate in that I had some role models when I was a child, some deaf role models that I could engage with and they discussed with me what I wanted to do and what I wanted to achieve, what barriers might exist for me and how I could work around those to achieve my final outcomes. It must be so satisfying for you then to know now that, that you're playing that role in other young people's lives. Absolutely, yeah. yes. A big smile from Michael. Hey, Michael, thank you so much for being here. It's been really great to meet you. Thank you. Thank you so much thank for the opportunity. Much. Thank you, Michael. And thank you to Sarah Dearlove, who is the voice that you were hearing there as our Auslan interpreter. You're on ABC Newcastle, eight minutes to ten. <gasps>